Hi everyone, uh, I'm Stephen Humble. I teach uh, eighth grade science at uh, in Levine, Arizona. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with everyone um, so that you can see. There we go. So hopefully you can see, can everyone see my screen or can someone see my screen or? Yes, we can see Okay, it. good. All right, so I'm uh, gonna just basically walk you through the process that I use when I assign a quiz from start where I put it into the computer to the point where I still look at the results. So I'm actually giving a quiz tomorrow, and this is a one question quiz because it's, um, it's a writing assessment, so they have, to, they have to do a writing test. So when I'm done writing the questions, I'll hit review up here, and I'll hit publish or assign. So you have the option to just publish it, which just sort of puts it in your database, or you can actually assign it now. So this is what it looks like to assign a quiz. So I'm gonna assign this to all four of my science classes, so I'll just start typing in period one, period three, period four, and period six. Okay. Uh, now, one cool thing that you can do with this, um, you can actually assign to individual students. So if you happen to write a quiz that's maybe for a student uh, on an IEP that needs modified assessments, you can write a quiz and give it just to one or two students. Um, you can just type in their name and their name will start to appear and you can click it. Um, right here, you've got assessment window. If you need to delay the start of the quiz, you can change it and then when it would be due. I'll tell you what I do personally. I open manually in class, that way they don't start early. And I close manually in class. That way, if I have a student who's absent for five or six days, it doesn't close on them. So I open manually in class, I close manually in class. Some options. Um, you have the option, now this is a writing test I'm giving, so there's no option. But if it's a multiple choice test or something that's objective graded where the computer can grade it automatically, you have the option of giving the students, you can click right there for on assignment submission, and it will give the students the grades right away. It'll tell them what they got. You also have the option of, of explicitly by teacher, which basically means they're not gonna see their scores until everybody's done. I personally like to do that because I don't want one kid to see, oh, number one is A, number two is B, number three is C, and then feed that information to somewhere else. It's just a test security thing for me. If you're doing it as an assignment or as practice, you probably want it to be automatically. You also have an option here of yes or no, meaning uh, for detailed reports, where they will only see their overall score unless you click yes. Yes tells them they'll see each individual question and what they got right and wrong. I like to turn that on because I want them to know what they got right and wrong. If it's a test and there's multiple questions, I like to shuffle up the questions so they're all in a different order. Just, again, it's a test security thing. Um, calculator, if it's a test that requires a calculator, you can give them an on-screen calculator. Uh, and so that's pretty much the process for assigning it. And you hit assign, and you're done. Now, when I go to, you can actually post this to Google Classroom, and I know they'll go into a little bit more detail about that. But once you open the quiz, let's just say I'm gonna open it, you have the option of just clicking right here and clicking Google Classroom. And it will actually post a link to Google Classroom. So there is that, that's just something to keep in mind as well. All right, so next, I've given my quiz. Good to go. How do I see my results? Well, this is your dashboard. You can just click on the quiz and it will open up the results and you can see the results. So that's the next thing I do is I monitor the quiz while it's happening. And that takes us to this screen. Now, one thing that I think is really cool is you've got right here um, the purple donut, pink drop, because I put this in present mode. It takes out student names. So you can actually present this to the class because it's not gonna show you the individual students' names. I'm gonna leave that on, obviously, just to maintain confidentiality. But if I were to turn that off, these would be replaced by the actual students. So just so you know. Um, so this gives me a lot of information. This blue line right here tells me the average amount of time students took on that particular question. So I can see where they're struggling. Green is correct yellow is partially correct, and red is wrong. This is the entire class as a whole. Down here, you can see for each individual student, it gives you a breakdown. Now, um, I can see, for example, for question two, that they all took a lot of time on this particular question. So I can click it, and I can review each individual student's answers to that, quest to that question. And I can see if 
One is being scored correctly. Because sometimes, you know, I, I'm not perfect and sometimes I put in the incorrect answers. And of course the computer just does what it's told to do. So it's gonna grade it wrong <laughs> if I tell it the wrong answer. So this is a good way for me to check to make sure that I put in the right answer for the computer to grade. This also helps me to understand, am I, am I missing something in my instruction? Did I teach something wrong? Okay, because that happens. It, it, sometimes I, I might, that's the whole point of assessment. I might look at this and go, yep, totally taught that wrong, gotta go back and redo it. So that's one way that you can do this. I can also see which students took a long time on the question. And next to each question, it'll tell you how many seconds that particular student spent on that particular question. And if you sync with Google Classroom, these will actually be their profile pictures that they've created, which I personally like, because then I can see who they are. So what I will do is I'll go through and I'll look at this and look for areas of weakness, look for potential problems, things I need to address with my students. In this case, I would look at question four and question 14 were the two that really stuck out to me. So um, this was a question regarding Newton's second law of motion. So I need to go back and I know I need to address this. And actually in this case, um, yeah, no, so I would need to go back and address that. Um, the other thing that's nice is on these partially, when you're sorting these on these partially correct, it'll show you, this is a matching question, which ones were right and wrong. So again, it gives you a lot of detail. But one other thing that's really nice is that you can view these um, by student. So for example, I can go to, let's say the orange leaf here, we've got a 44%, and I can view all their answers to each individual question just by this one student, okay? So I can go through and I can view their individual questions. I can also sort by, I just wanna see what they got wrong so that I know what they got wrong. It gives me some more information. One last view I wanted to show you is over here under Express Grader. This is a great view because this is going to give you every kid and all of their answers. Now it only works for some questions, so multiple choice, multiple answer, some of those questions, but it'll tell me what they wrote in each individual box so I can quickly analyze one specific question. If it says TEI, that means it's a tech enhanced item and it doesn't show in this grid. Um, but I can see all of their answers for every single question. So I can see, is there a common wrong answer? So for example, in this question, I can see that most of them got the math right, but some of them got the direction and the, the um, units wrong, which is just as important in this particular application. And I can see a lot of students picking A that were incorrect answers here. So that's the benefit of this particular view, is it gives you more information more quickly, which really helps you to understand what instruction do I need to go back and fix? What do I need to improve on? Is this a good question? Should I just toss this question out? Um, or did I teach this and they're just not getting it and I need to reteach it? So it's a really powerful um, view. And so that's what I do I, from assignment to the end. And then obviously I would put it in my gradebook program as well, but you know, that's, we all know how to use a gradebook. So, um, and that is pretty much all I had. Unless there are any questions, I will hand it back off. Oh, yeah, one, one quick question. Where do you get your questions from? Do you write them yourself or do you get them from the bank? Um, it's a mix. Now, uh, my, my, I teach Arizona Science, so I rely on just other Arizona Science teachers. Um, a lot of them come from our district, but what I use a lot of is uh, we have a program called Galileo, which is what our district purchases for benchmark assessments, and they provide us with formative questions. Um, so my wife works in a different district. They have a different bank of questions that they use. So a lot of my questions come from the standards-based questions that my district expects me to use. Um, I do write some of my own questions as well. Um, so I, it, it just varies a little bit. Now, one thing I will say is if it's a question that comes from a bank that we pay for, so for example, like our, our Galileo bank that we pay for, um, that we have a right to use that, but that's copyrighted, so I don't share that with the greater community. But if it's a question I write, I do tend to share those. So that's just something to keep in mind that I, I try to think about with copyright is you don't want to, obviously, you don't want to be responsible for copyright infringement because that'll come back on you from your district. So, but that's where I get most of my questions from. And our curriculum to our online curriculum.